Wonka. Hello, everyone. XM3 Van. <laughs> Wait, I can also rename myself <laughs> again. Um, how does it work? You can be whoever you want. Hey, guys. I guess hey, more user friendly. <laughs> wow, so many people wow. today. <laughs> this is awesome. Hey, Nuggin. Hey there. Anyone have any big weekend plans? I just found out there's a new Dune movie, but it's probably just still in the theaters. That's oh. all I got. Yeah, some people were getting really excited about that. Well, the last one was so bad, <laughs> but it's been nearly 40 years, so hopefully we're over it. Wow. I heard this one is good. I haven't seen it, but, I, but some friends did, and they said, they said it was good. So. Was oh, I'm, I, I am extremely hopeful, and I believe you. I, it can't be worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried to watch the original. I think it was on Netflix, and I just fell asleep like... 30 minutes in. <laughs> okay, awesome. Good good group today. Uh, this is nice to see all the diversity here. Um, I'm pretty much going to get started. Today's a pretty fun uh, session. Um, we're going to take a step aside from some of the rewards research series that we've been doing. So just to get people caught up um, we've basically been doing two series uh, this fall. We started with the Proposal Inverter, which is a mechanism for getting proposals funded by many DAOs so that DAOs can kind of coordinate together to fund proposals for things that are going to create a common good for multiple DAOs, uh, which is a really cool mechanism. And um, we did that for about five or six weeks, and it's still being um, modeled and simulated in the Prime DAO weekly DAO uh, to DAO model workshops, which are on Wednesdays, and you can find that in the Prime DAO server. Uh, we then jumped over to opening up rewards research because it's kind of like the season, it's happening all over the place. There's a development task force in the TEC that is aiming to upgrade the praise system. Uh, make it more simple to facilitate and more equitable overall and a bit more automated and to sort of capture uh, a lot of the nuances and subtle details of the work that's being done um, in this community specifically, but also lending itself to be more generable, uh, gen general for other communities that choose to implement it as well. So we've been doing a rewards research series here to open that up. And we, two weeks ago, we did a review of all of the analysis that was done on the praise system over the summer. And last week we took a look at Alexandra, uh, the bot uh, that Johan has developed uh, that we're using in Longtail to track Discord minutes, essentially. But we're going to take a step aside from all of that and just do something fun today. And we're going to take a look at the concept of web scrapers. Um, often as a token engineer, uh, you want to collect some data sources and you might want to create a system that can pull information from the web and put it into a spreadsheet that can then be analyzed. So we're going to build something today. I think we can build it in an hour, I hope, and uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, the inspiration for this is over the weekend, I was really looking deep into KlimaDAO. And if you're not familiar, KlimaDAO just launched their token, and this is, I, I was just putting together a sort of research document. I'll go ahead and share this in the labs channel. Oh, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, I think so.
So Klimadao's purpose is to accelerate the price of appreciation of carbon assets in order to force quicker adaption to the realities of climate change and drive additional finance toward low carbon technologies. As further voluntary commitments and compliance regimes come online, the world's companies will be forced to compensate, i.e. offset their carbon emissions. The costlier the negative externalities of their damage becomes, the more economic the decision to reduce emissions and invest in green alternatives. As described on our website, we are building a community that's resolute on solving climate change by creating a black hole for carbon to accelerate value pressure past the event horizon of traditional markets while creating synergies between DeFi and carbon markets. So uh, KlimaDAO, as it turns out, is actually a fork of Olympus DAO, <clears throat> Olympus DAO which is a really interesting protocol uh, that uses staking and bonding mechanisms to accumulate assets inside of its treasury. Um, so basically, whenever the price of, of Ohm, this is from Olympus DAO, whenever the price of Ohm goes up, the protocol mints more tokens and sells those tokens on the market in order to accumulate other tokens to lock them in the treasury. So those tokens might be, you know, wrapped ETH or USDC, things like that. So whenever the price of the token is appreciating, it actually sort of brings that price back down by minting more tokens, selling them and accumulating other assets. And so the treasury is perpetually growing. So KlimaDAO forked that model and said, we're not just gonna uh, lock any assets in our treasury, we're going to lock specifically carbon credits, which is possible from another protocol called Toucan, which is uh, tokenizing tons of carbon uh, carbon credits, which is really cool. So anyways, KlimaDAO is fascinating. They launched over the weekend, and this, they're ch this is really revolutionary. If we look at Klima on, uh, what's it going for on CoinGecko? Oh my goodness, and it's up 78% <laughs> overnight. <laughs> Um, this, this is crazy because one Klima token uh, represents one base ton of carbon. So it's one ton of carbon. Sean? Yep. This one's a Klima. Yeah. In search for Klima? No, this is... This Klima is, DAO. This is... Um, That's two different tokens. Is there? Yeah. Yes, I think uh, cl uh, a climber is on mainnet, and you have to bridge it to Polygon, and there you can wrap it to the to the real climber. So maybe there's some. But I think it's the same thing. I think they're one yes, to one. Yes, it's from the same. Yes. Uh, this is called uh, Alpha Climber. So it's before their for full protocol is released. This is just a simple ERC twenty uh, placeholder, basically, for Klima tokens. And you're right; yeah. they're going to be on Polygon, I believe. Um, so the normal Klima price is uh, two thousand five hundred. I just oh, said. how did you find that? Klima... On uh, Dex Guru right now, but I guess it's on CoinGecko too. Oh, Klima down. Mark Cuban was on a podcast recently, like this week, talking about Klima. Maybe that has something to do with the price going up so quickly. So I think this is an arbitrage opportunity because I think these tokens should be the same price. But yeah, Mark Cuban's into this. That's that's interesting. But this is really what you got to understand is that the point of Klima is to raise the price of a ton of carbon. And you can think of one Klima token as representing one carbon ton, uh, one ton of carbon. Right now, if Klima is trading at 2,500 USD, that means it's pulling the. That means you can buy a carbon credit from a verifier in the world. There's a few really reputable ones like Vera or South Pole, and you can tokenize it through the Toucan protocol, and then you can get it into Klima DAO. In, in exchange for one Klima token. And before before Klima launched, the price of carbon, you know, it varies all over the world, but on average, a uh, one ton of carbon was trading for about $12 USD. So basically overnight, this DAO pulled the price of captured carbon from $12 USD to $2,500 USD. And I would say that accomplishes their mission. Now, I would guess that this 
price has got to drift down because that is such a differential from $12 to $2,500. But imagine if it stays constant, every person in the world who's running a regenerative operation, maybe it's regenerative agriculture or just straight carbon capture, whatever it may be, they're now able to redeem 2,500 USD for every ton of carbon they uh, capture. And to give you some context, if you grow hemp, for example, one acre of hemp will sequester about 15 tons of carbon um, per crop cycle. And you can do two or three crop cycles in a year if you have optimal conditions. So if you had, fift what's 15 times 2.5, it's like 40, 40,000. So, so a farmer is getting an extra 40,000 USD per acre of crop, uh, per crop rotation. It's just really interesting how th these cyber physical systems, um, you know, they, it's, this, this is created out of financial engineering, but I do believe it's going to have a very, very significant impact on the shift of economies uh, towards sort of carbon capture and regenerative um, infrastructure. It's really interesting. But that's a bit of a tangent. So how I did my research on Klima was I read through all of their um, Medium articles. So let's see, is that... And how I started is I just made a spreadsheet. So here's Klima. Uh, they write really good articles. I don't know who their writer is, but uh, they're really, really good. Um, and the how the articles are all they, they kind of tell a, a, a st one really good story arc. Uh, there's 15 articles in total. So I copied them all into this spreadsheet. So I have a link to each article. I have the data is published, um, the recommended sort of reading time, and the number of claps it got so that I can get a, kind of a single overview into the protocol and the whole narrative that they're telling. Um, so they have three a three-part series on introducing Klima, um, then a little bit more on carbon and how they're forking Olympus DAO about their, they did an in initial discord offering, which is pretty cool. They did a, a token sale initially to discord members, pretty interesting model. Uh, they did some NFT art, uh, more about carbon markets, then their fair launch as a liquidity bootstrapping pool, um, how to participate, how to participate. Financing forest protection, this is super interesting. And then incentive alignment, carbon sourcing, and their launch. So it, it tells a really good story. But I was thinking, this is a pretty good process to try to understand a protocol, is to go through their all of their Medium articles, and even just seeing all the headlines in one place, and also kind of the number of claps associated. You could imagine you know, plotting this on a chart to kind of see the traction of the protocol over time and how it might gain and lose momentum. So I thought, okay, this is, I want to be able to do this uh, for more, for more medium sources because it's kind of a good way to do research. But this, this took me about 30 minutes probably just to do this by hand. Uh, I copy and pasted all the titles uh, and the data and made sure that the links were working and everything. So it'd be nice to have an automated system that, that could take care of that. So that's what we're gonna build today. And I'm pretty much ready to jump into that. I, I hope we can do it in 45 minutes. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments before, before I get started on that? It'll be pretty much hacking for about 40 minutes. Let's get started on that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I guess start a new repository. Um, I can probably close all this down. I'll just keep this uh, open as a reference. And I'll go on the commons uh, build on GitHub. and make a new repository called Medium uh, Scraper. Lab. 
tabs. Simple scraper bot for researching on medium. Make it public. Add a readme, git ignore Python, and license. Uh, I'm not going to add a license for now. Oh, we should have a default license on the TEC. That would be nice. Isn't the MIT license the default license for most of these projects? Mm. Yeah, that sounds about right. So I we can cop I can copy one in at the end of the lab. Okay, now I'm gonna open up a bit of a template. I have some old uh, code that I had worked on a couple of years ago. Um, that is a bunch of um, scrapers for looking at real estate data. Uh, yep, yeah, and I have it here. I called it Vanland DB, and I'm just going to open one of these up uh, to reference as a template. Okay, so I'm going to be using a library called LXML, which is an XML parser. Uh, XML is a kind of a programming language for formatting information and transferring it. And actually, HTML is a type of XML language. It's actually a subset. So I'm going to use that, and I'm going to use the Selenium web driver. So let's go ahead and grab these in our new repository here, create a notebook, and we'll call this uh, medium scraper. Okay, and let's see if we can import these things. We probably have to install them. Oh, seems like uh, I already have LXML and Selenium installed. That's kind of cool. Um, now I made a sort of function here. Uh, but how do we get started? Okay, so let's name our URL. So Selenium, like I said, is a web browser. So we're going to open up um, Selenium. And it's actually going to open up a web browser. And we're going to be able to navigate to this website. So let's name our URL and uh, see, if, see if this works. Uh, now you have to have an, a driver, a certain kind of driver installed. Uh, Let's see if I have it. So browser, so from Selenium, we're importing WebDriver, and we're, I'm going to try to open up Firefox. And it's that simple. Okay, so if it doesn't work off the bat for you, it's probably going to give some error. Uh, there's a thing called a Gecko. It's called Gecko is the Firefox driver. Um, and you'll just get an error that says Gecko not installed. And so you just have to Google like how to install Gecko Driver, and it'll. That I, there's usually a Stack Overflow post or something, um, and it's kind of as simple as like downloading a file and just putting it on your system somewhere. Um, pretty simple, but looks looks like I have it. So this is the Selenium uh, driver, and it's basically Firefox. Uh, could go to YouTube, you know, just loads like any any normal uh, browser. So let's minimize that for now. And we can say browser.get and we'll pass it the URL. And so it should navigate. Okay, so it navigates to that web page. That's cool. So now we're going to want to grab the HTML from it. So it looks like this is the code here that I want to do. Uh, so let's try that. 
um, HTML equals browser dot page source, and we get all the HTML. So if we open this up, and I think if you hit Control Shift I uh, in in pretty much any browser, it opens up your developer tools, and so you could go right here is all the all the um, HTML. Um, so that's pretty neat. Just close that for now. Oh, actually, that we're going to need that. So now what do we want to do? We have all the HTML. Uh, so we could probably pull the... There's a, lot, there's a lot here. I hope we're able to find what we're looking for. We probably, probably will be able to. I hope it's not all encoded or something. Um, so let's, let's take a look at how we want to get our data again and remind ourselves of that. So we had our climate data research report and uh, this one. So we want to get data like this. So let's start with um, titles. Let's see if we can get a list of all of the titles of all of the articles. So how we do that is we open up the browser and we will use the developer tools. And there is a really neat tool in the top left called pick an element. And you click that, and then you go and highlight over something like this, and it shows you where it is in the HTML. And then we can see what it is here. So it's class EHBW, okay, uh, R, has these properties, REL, I don't, I'm not even sure what that's short for, but it's called no opener. It's an href, so in HTML, href is a link. Uh, and it gives a relative location of the link. Uh, and then it has in text the actual title, which is Climadow Launch. And it says reflections uh, on our manifesto. Yep. So we're going to see if we can, based on the properties of this link, if we are able to basically grab all the, all the titles that we want to grab. So the, I mean, the first thing we can do is we can get all hrefs, which would give us all links, but there's probably like a hundred links on this page. Um, we can also try to get everything with this class, which might actually work. So let's try that. Um, EHBW. is the class. So let's get everything with class EHBW. So let's take a look at the template. Um, so we're going to create it with LXML. We want to create what's called a tree. And then we can use this um, technology called XPath. And this is going to search through the tree to find what we need. <clears throat> so see, we're giving this specifier for class. So we're going to use give the class is EHBW. And this is the type of the element. And I think the type of the element we we're looking for is just actually a what's called an anchor in HTML. Uh, so let's just see if this gives us the titles. That would be really nice. <laughs> cool. I think oh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's out, see how many titles we have on our page. We have one. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe. So it gave us elements. Uh, let's see if we can unpack those. Those are like HTML elements. Um, so let's just grab one of them and see what we can do. So let's E for element equals titles. Um, just take the first one and see what functions we have. Um, text, cool. So we can get the text of the element. So we could say E dot text for E in titles, E's for element. Sweet. So we now have all the titles of the articles that have loaded. Now it doesn't give us all of the articles because there's this button here called show more, which we would have to click. So there's, we're gonna have to make a little bit of logic where we check if there's a show more button and if there is, we load. But it looks like we know how to get all of the titles um, that are loaded and let's see if we can also get the link that corresponds to them. Um, oops. E dot What would it be called? href or something? And see what values does. Values. Oh, okay, so these are the values of its properties. So it's remember its class was this ehbw no opener, and then here is technically the link, I believe. So. This values, if these are all standard then and we call on their values, then we're going to get three elements. Um, so this is this looks like a relative link. So if we actually remember we have our original URL here, which is climadow.medium.com. So if we go URL plus this, then that should be the full link to the article. But it has this weird um, user profile thing on it, which we can remove. So let's just see if we remove everything after the question mark. Um, so this is a string. So strings in Python, I believe, have a dot split. Is that right? Let's just uh, see. If we say A equals uh, A, B, C, and we go A dot split on B, then it gives us the two values. So we should be able to split this on the question mark here um, and take the first value. Then we get the link without the all that other weird stuff on it. Oops, that's a 404, so that's not right. Um, well, how do we, let's, let's open up our browser and see what this link actually is. Hmm. I think there was a extra forward slash in that. Here? Or, yeah, here, right? Yeah, good point. So let's wait. So that's because our URL has a forward slash and this has a forward slash. Um, hmm. Okay, so this is getting pretty hacky, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. So this means um, take all the characters except the last one. And so if we put that here, now we just have a single forward slash. Let's see if that does better. 
Nice. Was that Vi Vi V? Or... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good eyes with the double forward slash. Okay, so this is how we can get a link. I know it looks kind of ugly at this point, but it works, um, at least for a single case. Let's hope it generalizes for all of them. So we know how to get all the titles. So we could also do, um, let's see if we can just do a list comprehension. Uh, so we say E is the element for E in titles then we should have all the links. So let's see if this um, carbon markets retail offset pricing. Yep, okay, cool. So we can get all the titles and we can get all the links. Okay, so now it's usually you want to take a, once you do some hacky stuff like that, it's good to just take a step back and clean up a little bit. So that was the class we needed. We got that. So we get the HTML, we make it a tree. So here we're getting all the titles. So let's just kind of annotate this. Um, get all of the titles and their links. So I just made this a markdown self, just for a little bit of notation. Um, I can also merge these cells, because this is all just getting the HTML. This is just um, initialize browser and get the HTML of the page. And then we get so let's, um, it's usually good to kind of run things. Let's restart. So we basically nuke our whole workspace and just double check if everything is working as it should. So this is going to open up the browser and load the web page. And then we grab all the titles based on their class and we're able to get all of their names and all of their URLs. Cool. So what's next? So we have names and URLs for each article. Um, let's get the date. Oh, let's get these stats here. So four days ago, okay, so let's get the date. Open up our developer tools, pick an element, pick the date here. Okay, so let's try this. Class B, A, B, 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 C, B, Y. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Not very descriptive class names, but hopefully it works. So we'll do the same thing we did before. We're going to use this um, tree.xpath. And we already have the tree loaded from the HTML. And oops, um, this is a, a type P, P for paragraph. That's HTML. So we'll just change this to P. And we'll put this in for the class. and call this um, dates. Cool, and there should be 10, right? Twelve. Hmm. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. So we might have a bit of extra info here. Let's see what we've got. So these are probably all elements like we saw before. And so, oh, we should be able to get text. So if we go uh, e dot text for e in dates, okay. So it looks like we have an extra one at the beginning and at the end. So again, we can do some hacky stuff. We say drop the first one and drop the last one. And then we should have 10 elements here. So that should match with all of our titles. Okay, so those are the dates. Let's take the number of claps. And what was the, okay, the reading length and the number of claps. Get the reading length. So that's just a span. Let's see what else do we have here? Okay, this let's try this. Class B A B B B B C B D. Whatever that means. This is um, reading time. Now let's do this. Okay, we get read more, not exactly what we're looking for. Um, oh, because it's, in, I think it's in this span. So let's take one of these elements and try this get children. What does that do? Span. Okay, so we get we get the span element, which is what I was going for. That's what we want. Okay. So um, you, you'll notice this. We're, we're working on what's called a tree. This tree thing that we've created out of the HTML text. It's uh, if you've worked with JavaScript, then you're probably familiar with the DOM. Uh, what's it? What? It, what is that? What is that? What's the DOM? It's the uh, document object model. So this is actually how like all web pages are constructed. Every web page is actually a tree, a tree data structure. So there's some root node, like the very top of the tree that represents the entire web page. And then you'll have your initial sort of containers inside of that. And that'll usually be like your background, for example, it will be near the top of that tree. And, um, uh, you know, and then you, you have containers inside of containers, inside of containers, inside of containers, inside of containers. And so you get this sort of tree structure, uh, which is how every web page is rendered. And so that's what we're doing here. We're sort of navigating the tree. So, so um, I had gotten this uh, HTML object here, which is the P, the paragraph, and nested inside of that uh, is the span object. 
So that means that this span object is a, chil is a child of this paragraph object. And the paragraph is the parent of this span object because they are contained in the DOM, in the tree structure of the DOM. So I was able to, I couldn't grab this span directly because it doesn't have any properties. It doesn't have any class or anything. There's no way I could specifically tell um, the X path on how to find these elements because they don't have any attributes. So I had to find their parent attributes based on this specific class that we get, which gives us this sort of green. Uh, and when you see class here, that's referencing some sort of CSS class. And so that's how this text gets styled like this with green and uh, the size and font and everything. And so I can grab this whole th object here by its class and then take its children. And actually its first child was a, it was a comment. For some reason there's a random HTML comment here. But then the second child is the span object. And so I got the span object and then I took its text to get the reading time. So I should be able to apply this to all the elements that I've got. Um, to get all the reading times. And what are all it, titles or no? Okay, so this, okay, and then it's like reading time. Okay, sweet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks good. So we have all the reading times, and the very last thing to get is the number of claps. Let's get that. OK, it's got a class. So let's see if we can copy that. Use this. Class. Call this claps. Oops. Oh, it's empty. Um, because it's not a paragraph, it's a button. Sweet. So it looks like a lot more than 10. Let's see if what happens when we check the text. So e.text for e in claps. OK, so it's just like alternating. Um, anyone know in Python how to get all the alternating ele elements of a list? Filter by a range with mod. To just get the even ones. Ooh, nice. I think we want the odd ones in this case. I think. Um, yes, if, if, uh, so we could, uh, you might be picturing some code in your head, but I'll see what I, if I, if we go like this, if uh, I mod, Two. Oop. If not, <laughs> cool <laughs> octopus <laughs> for the win. One, you're a killer. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, and then we could also just. I think there's a function called strip if we go a equals a a dot strip cool so let's do that e dot strip Boop. cannot assign 
Oh, because E is an element. Okay, so we want here dot strip. Cool. Okay, I think we have everything. Do you want to wrap that as an int, potentially? Yeah. Well, it's okay, because we're going to put everything together as a data frame. Okay. And it's okay if it's a string, and then if we wanted to, we could just cast the whole column. Mm -hmm. But yeah, good point. Okay, so I'm just going to rerun this whole thing and hope everything runs. Sometimes when you rerun everything, you'll realize you left in a little bug or something. Oop, titles is not defined. Hmm. Did I remove the whole titles thing? Dang. So it was something like this. Titles and EHBW, EHBW, and it's a, a. cool. Okay. Okay, now we gotta. We're just outputting these. Let's save them. So let's say. Let's overwrite our initial um, element lists that we find. So. Oops. Oh, no, can't do that. Um, I'll call these columns. I'm going to call all these things columns or column. Title column, uh, call this URL column. Um, date column. Um, reading time column and claps column okay there we go nice to just have some simple standard aspects to like your variables sometimes it helps the eye so now we've got four groups like four cells code cells each one ends with having a column variable so that can just kind of help the reader understand where we're going with this and I'll just say get all of the titles uh, URLs uh, dates, reading times, and clap numbers. Okay, and then put it all together as a data frame. So we'll just import pandas. And pandas.dataframe hmm we'll just see how this I think the easiest way is a dictionary uh, let's just see what this looks like um, title map to title column yeah okay I think that's what we want so date maps to date column uh, 
reading time maps to reading time column and claps maps to claps column cool Let's call that a data frame and uh, oh we don't have the URLs so it'd be cool if we could have a hyperlink. I wonder if we can have a hyperlink column in a data frame. Wow. Pandas style format. Maybe it's not necessary. Seems a little bit complicated. It's kind of cool that it, it uh, looks like pandas has a, uh, if you use the format. Okay, so, so actually pandas can format um, HTML. Maybe let's try this real quick. Yeah, okay, let's try this. Uh, something like this. Yeah. So I wonder if I can make a hyperlink column. So in seven minutes, I'll try to make a hyperlink column and then output it. So first of all, we need the URL here. URL is the URL column. Oops. Comma. Okay, so we have our URL column. Now this is, we could just output this as a CSV and call it a day. I'm just going to see if I can do something kind of funky at the end here with a few extra minutes and merge these two columns into a single uh, hyperlink column. So, um, trying to remember how to like make a function on two columns. Um, we can use up. So what happens if we go df dot apply, and then we pass a function like let's make def uh, call this function uh, takes a column. Wait. Ah. Oh yeah. Um, what if we go df uh, hyperlink equals df mm, URL and df title mm -hmm. where was that I think I have to go apply. Uh, dot apply. Mm. 
Okay, I don't think I'm going to get this. We'll leave this as a bonus for the <laughs> for the uh, keen reader, um, the la keen lab student. So homework challenge for anyone who wants to attempt it is the idea of combining a title column and a URL column into a single sort of like this, right? So these are actually links. These are hyperlinks. Now, alternatively, what you could do is you can just you could take this data and we can export it into our spreadsheets. So what we're going to do is df.2 csv and we'll call this uh, scraped data. Or um, we can call it, you know, what's our URL? Clima.medium.com. Uh, let's just call it climadow data. Dot CSV. So now we have our data, and um, we could. Oops, I didn't want the hyperlink column. So we can then just copy that into like a Google Sheet. Um, and then probably in Google Spreadsheets, there's a way of, I don't know, mapping all of these links into these titles. But that's just being finicky. So uh, that's that's what it's that's the process of uh, putting together web scrapers. It's really fun. As you can see, it's quite simple in the end. Um, we simply you know import our packages: Selenium, LXML, and Pandas. Uh, we grab the URL, we open up the browser and we plug in the URL and we make a tree structure out of it. So this is what we call boilerplate. This is just like the standard code. You know, you'll just have this every time. Uh, and then what you do is you open up and you use this uh, inspector element to pick what you want to grab. And you find any unique identifiers like the class or the HTML type that it is and you use this xpath function. And this might look a little scary, but when you have a template to go off of, it's really easy. And you can always just look up, um, you know, Python, LXML, xpath, uh, and then you'll see all sorts of Stack Overflow posts and tutorials and that kind of stuff. So you can figure out what, what you need to pass into xpath to get your list of elements. And then once you have your list of elements, you just you know either directly extract the text, or in this case, uh, sometimes you have to kind of index into a list to grab what you really want. Uh, in this case, we had to actually get children, and then index into that list, and then grab the text. But it's usually something like that. And then you clean up your data, and you can pipe it all into a data frame to have a nice clean output. And then this can be automated, right? So now the idea is, well, let's just try this. Uh, let's go, let's try Olympus DAO. Right, so we could take this, and it'll probably break. There'll probably be some slight difference here. But you can, as you apply it to more and more things, you might have to tweak some uh, aspects manually. But eventually, you can come up with a general system that will just scrape um, any any uh, web page as long as it's a sort of a standard format. So let's see if this breaks or if this outputs something. Okay, so it didn't it didn't get anything here. Uh, you know, so somewhere along the chain, there's going to be some slight difference from Clima DAO to Olympus DAO on Medium. And we could go through and figure out what that is, but maybe that's a future episode to turn this into a generalized uh, medium scraper bot. Um, but I'll push this up. We've got a repo uh, here, and I'll go ahead and push that now. And we're at the top of the hour, so I just want to thank everyone for joining. This was kind of long and heady, but uh, fun stuff too. Like in 45 minutes, we, we were able to scrape all the medium articles. So. 
it's pretty powerful uh, technology. Thank you, Sean. That's amazing. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank that was awesome. Man. Have a yes, good weekend. That was amazing. <laughs> uh, just soaking up every second. Awesome. <laughs> very informative. See you later, guys. Thanks, David. Thanks, John. I'll see you later. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Vive IV. Okay, so that that's uh, the code is all pushed. So feel free to go check it out, guys. I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>